Well, praise the Lord, everyone. I am so happy to greet you tonight in the name of Jesus. Listen, uh, I know we've been doing solemn assembly now. Uh, this is our fourth month. Uh, the Lord led us the first month, as always, to get a deeper understanding of our consecration and dedication to the Lord. Uh, we went on to talk about the ways that God was dealing with us in transformation. Uh, transformation is a work of the Holy Spirit, where God uses his own power, but uses resources like the Word of God, uh, like other people, like other dynamic spiritual gifts, to actually, first of all, birth us into the kingdom of God, and then to transform or change us as we live for him. We actually live out transformation day by day. We're never finished until the Lord comes back. And certainly God has met us in a mighty way during those teachings. We also just got through dealing with focusing on Jesus, looking at different aspects of the Lord Jesus Christ himself, ending with his redemption uh, at Calvary and in the resurrection for uh, Easter Sunday. And I praise God for so many of you who have joined with us of these weeks and these months. Uh, you may recall that uh, during the beginning of the pandemic, the Lord gave us a word and he told us that we would not just simply survive the pandemic, that we would as a church, as a people thrive. I mean, actually thrive, grow and prosper. I think God has been true to his word for so many of you, so many of us who have done these teachings together, have committed yourself to daily devotions, Commit yourself to reflection. Commit yourself to even, even journaling, writing down what the Lord is doing. And then the next step, sharing with others uh, in action items, uh, in including others of what God's doing in your life and how God is doing in their life and you're sharing together. Brothers and sisters, I believe that this next unit that we've been dealing with, and we launched it again uh, this week uh, on uh, a living church, for a dying world is gonna revolutionize and change our church, our persons individually, and what God is doing in this earth. I believe that this is the loud voice of God speaking to all that will hear, that we need to look at again, this fantastic, tremendously important subject of the church of Jesus Christ. And again, a living church, not just a denomination or a group or a location or a building. No, a living church given for and to a dying world. And I want you to just embrace this with me. And I want you to commit yourself to getting others to join with you in these teachings each and every day, every Tuesday, every Thursday, and then on Wednesday, the prayer time. And then on Friday night, I'm asking every member of our church to join me at 6 p.m. every Friday with these Zoom interactions where we summarize the week. I just know that God's gonna do something very special uh, to each and every one of us if we commit together to be in what we're talking about tonight, that is the church, a living church to a dying world. Nothing is more profound. Look, we begin on Monday and Tuesday dealing with Matthew 16, remember? Uh, when the Lord came through the coast of Caesarea Philippi, he asked his disciples, who do men say that I am? And they gave him an answer. They think you're John the Baptist. And they think you're maybe Elijah or one of the other prophets. And then he asked the pertinent question, but who do you say that I am? That's the key to be in the church. How do you see Jesus? Who is he really to you? He is, in fact, the Messiah. He is the savior of the world. Look, the world died in Adam. The world comes alive only in Jesus. And now the world comes alive in Jesus through his church. Listen to me. I've said this so many times. And I hope you can embrace it. The church is the only vehicle. The church is the only God-given vehicle to rescue a dying world. So you've been caught up like so many people saying, we don't need the church. Or the church is not right. The church is not is phony. Listen to me again. By the word of God, by the Holy Spirit, the church, the Lord's church is the only vehicle, the only remedy to deliver this world. There is no other way that this world is going to be delivered but through the living church of Jesus Christ. And that's why it's so important. That's why the enemy has used so many of us to be down on the church. I'm, I'm sure you've had bad experiences sometime in a church with a pastor 
with people who call themselves bishops or whatever. Look, that's going to happen. That's going to happen in dealing with any type of people. But hear the Lord again, the Lord Jesus. Upon this rock, the revelation of who the Lord is, I will build my church and the gates of hell. The deepest, the darkest forces of evil are going to fight. Fight what? Against the church. Why would the demons, why would the devil fight so hard against the church? Because the devil knows the church is God's answer. The living church of Jesus Christ is God's remedy for the world. And the devil will do all he can at all times to defeat, to discourage, to misrepresent, to discredit the church of Jesus Christ. But I hope tonight you will continue to walk with me as we embrace the church. Again, let's go a little bit deeper in the teaching. The church is again that organism that is going to be used by God to bring revival, to bring life to a world. But look at the word church, ecclesia. You're gonna keep hearing that. It's a compound Greek word, ek, out of, ek. Then klesia is a Greek word to be the called or called. Again, the church is the ecclesia. It is the congregation or the assembly that's been called out. What? Called out of darkness. Called out of the world. Called out of its former life. Listen, we cannot be the church if we live the same life we lived before we were called out by the Lord. I want you to really deal with this. Upon this rock, I will build my ecclesia. I will build my called out congregation globally, worldwide. The church of Jesus Christ, because we're designed again by the Lord to be rescued so that we can then rescue a dying world. Listen, I want you to delve deep with me in today's teaching, Thursday's teaching, and then tomorrow, Friday's teaching, right, about this issue of the church being a called people. I wanted to deal with it being the called out people. I just focused on being the called. Because again, that word called is more than just a saying. As I said in my teaching on today, Thursday, and then tomorrow, this, this power, power of being called is more than what we think. The Bible used this word klesia or called to announce to us that the church, those who've been born again, are only the church because they've been called by the Lord, by God himself. Let me read you one of the scriptures, and I hope you'll study these passages today, and I want to focus on John chapter 1 and verses 11 through 13. Very powerful and often not understood to give power to the church because the church is the call of God. That is, he has called us. Look what he says in St. John chapter 1 in verse number 11. It says about the Lord Jesus, he came into his own, his own world, and his own world received him not. Look at verse number 12. But as many as received him, as many as embraced him, that word is lambano, he has embraced Jesus as Lord and as Savior. To them gave he the power or the authority to become sons or children of God. So notice that. He came into this world to call his own. He called us. And as many as received the call, to them he gave us power or authority to become his children. But verse 13 is what I want to deal with tonight about being called of God. Look what he says in verse 13. Those who he allowed to become his sons or daughters were those which were born three things, not of blood, not of the will of the flesh, nor of the will of man, but of God. Look at this power of being called. You, you have not been born again or called to be his son or daughter by blood or by you know natural genetics. That didn't get it. It wasn't because of your natural upbringing or your natural background that you have been born or called into God's kingdom. No, it was not the will of the flesh. It was not, again, something outside of the spiritual, but the flesh. Maybe, in fact, the flesh meaning our natural background of who we think we are, the power and authority of the flesh. But the flesh had nothing to do with us being birthed into the kingdom, nor of the will of man, 
He said, mankind has something to do with this. How were we called and what causes to be born? The will of God. Do you understand if you are a part of the church, you are only a part of the church because of the will of God, the voice of God called you out of darkness. You may have thought you came to him, but you could not have come to him unless he first came to you. That's saying John 6, 44, that no man can come to God unless the father first calls them. So you should rejoice if you are a part of the church because you're only a part because you've been called by the Lord. That voice of God, that, that divine summons, that divine invitation is so powerful. If I'm called of God, I know I can be kept because if he called me, he'll keep me. Now, if I'm not really born again, I just walked down an aisle and said, I accept the Lord as my personal savior. Well, I got baptized, but I did not repent. My heart wasn't in it. Then again, as the devil begins to bombard you, discourage you, he's going to be successful. So if you know you've been called by God, a divine call before you were born, then you get strength and resiliency to stay put in the household of faith. So again, that word called is a verb. Again, 1 Peter, um, when, when we said you are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a peculiar people. Why? He has called us out of darkness into his marvelous light. We'll get to that probably next week. We've been called out of darkness. In fact, the whole issue of being born again uh, is embedded in the scripture from Tuesday, uh, again, and Wednesday, uh, again, in Matthew chapter 1, verse 21, talking about Mary. She shall call his name what? Jesus. Why Jesus? Because he shall, he shall save his people from their sins. Jesus is the redeemer. He calls us out of darkness. He redeems us. That means he delivers us from our sins. When you are born again, you are no longer the slave of sin. You now have the power to be the slave of Christ. And that's what the church really is. That's why we've been called out to call a dying world out. And so again, this issue of being called is the voice of God, the summons of God, and we've been called. Look at another powerful verse about called. Called is a verb, God called us, but also called is a noun what we are. We are the called. What does he say in Romans chapter 8? He says, and we know that all things work together for good. To who? To them that love God, to them who are the called. That's a noun. The called. We've been called according to his purpose. We are the called of God. Uh, the Bible says that, uh, 1 Corinthians, we've been called to be saints. We've been called to be the saints. So being called there is a noun, what we are. We are the called of God. He wants us to understand that we are the called of God, that we have been called out of darkness into his marvelous light because God wants to use us. He wants to use us in his kingdom. And you are the called of God according to his purpose. So again, very important to understand that he has called us for a reason. He has called us to call others. We're going to get to that uh, in the end of this week and next week. Uh, again, if you are called, if you are that verb, that, that, that voice of God called you, you are that noun, you are part of that conglomerate, that assembly of, of people who are called the church, then you have purpose and a job to do. I want to get into deeply with you other things about the church. How is a person born again? What does it mean to be born again? I, not just giving God my heart, Again, okay. what does it mean to be born again? And I don't mean just doctrinally being born again. I mean that there are signs other than the speaking in tongues of the Holy Spirit in your life. Because if you're born again, your life will change. Your life will change if you've been born again. And if you're in a church where people have committed to discipling you deeper and deeper into what it means to be God's, to be God's call and to be a part of God. One of the things I want to talk about as we go through these weeks again about the church is this. Think about this. We, we don't even talk about the next great event that's going to happen uh, again to the church, to the world. It's the rapture. What is the rapture? You know what the rapture is. The rapture is not God coming back to earth. He's not going to touch the earth. He's coming in the sky. And when he comes, he's going to do what? Call and snatch out his church. The very fact that the next great event 
is the rapture to encourage you. You are the call of God. You must be about your father's business because he has called you out. He's going to come back for you. He, listen, saints, he's coming back for the church. He's coming back, not for individuals, but for the church, the entire church, those who've been born again. He's going to snatch us out, whether living or dead, he's going to snatch us out. The rapture even says that we are a living church for a dying world. I want you to embrace this, understand that, that he wants us to be powerful people who join together. And I want you to be turned on by what it means to be a part of the church. I want to help you to understand what is a healthy church. Yeah, we can do that. We're going to look at that in some detail. The Bible reveals it. What, is, what are the traits of a healthy church? What's the, what are the traits of a healthy church member, of a healthy disciple? All that we call disciples and saints, I'm not judging uh, those, but I'm saying this, that yes, you should be taught what it means to be healthy in the Lord. In these last days, and again, as COVID, I said again, God told us, it's not just going to survive COVID, you're going to thrive. I believe that these teachings that we started back in January is really the forefront of God drawing our church in particular and others to a level in God that we have never been before. I don't care what you've experienced. I don't care your disappointments. I'm telling you this, upon this rock, he building his church and the forces of evil, the gates of hell shall not prevail against us. I want you to be a part. And listen, please hear me now. I want every leader of our church, every member of our church again, to join us every day in these studies, devotions, and teachings. Yes, every day. That's how you become a child of God. That's how you become equipped to do the work he's called us to, to, to do. And if the leaders don't do it, how can you inspire others? I try my very best. I've tried over 40 some years to never ask any of you to do something that I myself is not already doing. I'm not perfect, but I am committed to embodying what God has called the church to be and to do. And I command you by the power of the Holy Spirit to be a part of this and not to be selfish. I want you to encourage others who are in our church, maybe not in our church, but in other places, maybe not even born again, and encourage them to walk with you in these daily devotions. Listen to me, brothers and sisters, no matter what we've gotten used to in this world, we should be studying the word of God every single day. You must be praying and committing yourself to the Lord every single day. You must have the mind of Christ, what he wants you to do and become in this world every single day. You can call it radical. It's natural. It is a, a signature uh, habit of a healthy Christian that you seek to know God's will every single day. And you understand that God's will is not simply involved in what you do or think. God's will is always attached to the church. You cannot pastor yourself. You cannot be the church of yourself. You need to go back and see what, how God sees it, how he sees his church. And so I implore you, I encourage you to be a part. On tomorrow night, God be our help. We'll be on at six o'clock again to review this week. I hope you are a part and will commit to that and commit others in our church. Inspire them to do the same thing. Brothers and sisters, these are the last days. But these are good days. Let me quote again uh, the tale of two cities. These were the best of times and these were the worst of times. We're living in the worst of times, but also the best of times. We can be the church. I don't care what people may say, how they put it down. We can be that church because the church is the only remedy that God is going to use to deliver a dying world. Be a part of it. Be encouraged. Listen, my wife sends her greetings. I send you Christian greetings in Jesus' name. I pray every day, Lord, bless our church. Bless our people. Help us to, to repent. Stop being the way you used to be. Let the Holy Spirit use you. Stop being self-willed. Too many of us don't understand the power of the Holy Spirit is the power of humility and commitment. They must be hallmarks of your walk with God. Yeah, I love you in Jesus' name. I know I've gone long tonight, but I thought it was imperative to share this teaching with you. 
Embrace it. Share it with others. I'll see you soon. God bless you. I love you. In Jesus' name.